بسم الله الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله everyone welcome back to the Silu Friday reminder a series in which we have a reminder on the day of Jumu'ah not to replace the Jumu'ah khutbah but just meant to be a reminder for those of us who maybe because of the snow or because of the limited capacity aren't able to go to Jumu'ah um, as as they normally would. Um, Inshallah, we're going to be continuing the series that we've been on, common Muslim phrases uh, that we say on a day-to-day -day basis, but maybe don't understand some of the insights behind them. And the point of this series is to maybe look at them with a bit, or slow down the way we look at these phrases. Uh, so we have a bit more appreciation of these common phrases that really are supposed to be the... Uh, the way in which we express some of our deepest held beliefs within the, uh, our tradition. So with that, we'll begin. Inna alhamdulillah, na'hamaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ghfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiyati a'malina. Man yahdihi allahu falamudilla lah, wa man yudlil falahadiyya lah. Wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa Allah, wahdahu la sharika lah, wa nashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Qara Allahu ta'ala fil Qur'an al-Majid. Ba'da naqul a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا دربتم في سبيل الله فتبينوا ولا تقولوا لمن ألقى إليكم السلام لست مؤمنا We begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we send peace and blessings upon our final messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Today the phrase that I wanted to comment on is actually the phrase that most of us begin uh, or we're supposed to be beginning our common conversations with and that is assalamu alaikum I actually started off with assalamu alaikum um, and it's typically translated is may the peace uh, uh, may peace be upon you peace be upon you something along those lines you add sometimes to it assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu which is may the peace and blessings and mercy of God be upon you so that's a better greeting um, than just this simple form. And then uh, sometimes we joke about this in group chat. Sometimes there's like an, uh, such an extra salam that people add that, that they keep adding uh, things to the, the typical phrase of assalamu alaikum. But what I wanted to get into a little bit is what does the, when you say assalamu alaikum to someone or when someone says assalamu alaikum to you, what are some of the guidelines or the rules of engagement we're really supposed to be taking on? Is it just a formality of a greeting or was there meant to be something a little bit deeper that's found? Um, and that's really what I wanted to uh, understand today. And the way to do that would actually be by looking at where is the idea of sending salam found within the Qur'an. And actually, it's found in a couple of different spaces. But the one I wanted to focus on is actually something that occurs in Surah An-Nisa, uh, the fourth chapter of the Qur'an, which deals with a lot of complex realities that the Muslims are going through, especially when it comes to the Medinian period. Of, uh, uh, of the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the story or life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And something that was going on in the Medina uh, period that was not going on in the Meccan period was actually that there were some people who uh, pretended to be Muslim, but they weren't actually Muslim. So they were just using their Muslim cover or pretending to be Muslim, but they had other intentions. Uh, maybe it was like uh, political benefit, maybe it was familial benefit, maybe it was... Um, uh, economic benefit, but there was some sort of benefit f to taking on the appearance of being a Muslim. That wasn't a problem that occurred in Mecca because if in Mecca, if you were a Muslim, um, you didn't get any benefits. All you got was uh, maybe persecution or um, people saying things about you. Um, or people boycotting you. But in, later on, d sometimes it was convenient to show, quote-unquote, a Muslim identity. And, of course, there was also the nefarious intent of they wanted to pretend to be Muslim so that they could damage the Muslim community in some way. And actually, it's in this time that uh, one of the ayat around the idea of spreading salam or k saying salam to people comes uh, gets revealed. And in this ayah, it's ayah number 94 of Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, O you who claim to have belief, O you who have believed, um, or you who are actively acting upon their belief. Um, many ways to really translate that. إِذَا دَرَبْتُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ When you are دَرَبْتُمْ, when you're journeying, one way to translate it is when you're out, uh, out and about in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes this meant when you were out on a military expedition. Sometimes this meant you were out for a very important purpose. But daraba really has like a seriousness to it. That when you're out in a serious situation, uh, for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and one way we can understand this, of course, the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this was actually revealed after three battles had taken place. 
um, in which there were literal battles, like wartime was going on. So when you're out and it's a moment of war, or just a serious moment in general, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, فَتَبَيَّنُوا Make things clear. Meaning, do your due diligence because you don't know, um, your safety is very valuable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you're out, be careful. Watch your step and make sure to achieve clarity before you act. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues with the command, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ أَلْقَى إِلَيْكُمُ السَّلَامِ Don't say to someone who doesn't, Allah doesn't say the one who gives you a sincere salam, like salimu. No, it's أَلْقَى إِلَيْكُمُ salam. Throws a salam your way. So this doesn't mean just to the people who are like, you know, like sometimes when someone says salam, there's like a sincere, heartfelt, like happiness, and you can tell that they mean just good for you. That's not it. Allah's like, anyone who just says the phrase salam, assalamu alaikum, lasta mu'minan, you're not a believer. And this is an interesting thing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to command for us or to say because this doesn't even say, don't say to them, lasta musliman. It says, lasta mu'minan. Because one of the ways we understand our tradition is um, when we submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, we become Muslim. There's actually an ayah in Surah Al-Hujrat in which uh, a group of people came up to the Prophet ﷺ and said, we have believed. And Allah says, say aslamna, that we're Muslims. We have submitted. Don't say we have believed. Because belief, belief has something to do with the heart. It has like you've truly submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not a hypocrite and you're acting in a way of belief. That, that's mu'minan. Musliman is I think I'm Muslim. Is like you, you pretty much know I'm, I've submitted. That's it. I'm declaring myself Muslim. That's what's required to be a Muslim. But to be a mu'min is one degree higher than that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually says about this random person you just met who just did what? Alqa ilaykum as salam, who just threw a salam your way, don't think that they are not mu'min. And the reason that becomes even more interesting is you're not allowed to believe about yourself that you're a mu'min. Like, we're supposed to, out of humility about ourselves, we say that we are Muslim. Inshallah, may Allah bless us with iman, true belief. Um, but we're not allowed to say, you can't just go around to people and say, I'm a mu'min, I'm a mu'min. You can't do that. But Allah says, to someone who just throws a salam your way, Expect that they are mu'min. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, تَبْتَغُونَ عَرَضَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا فَعِنْدَ اللَّهِ مَغَانِمُ كَثِيرَةٌ That don't say to them that you're not a believer. And the way it's translated in the translation in front of me, um, uh, inequitably seeking the advantage of the present, of the dunya. So meaning that if you take that away from them, probably what's going to happen is you value this world more than you value the hereafter. That's, there's a lot that can be said here, but um, don't try to take away Iman because you're not the one who judges Iman. That's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to judge. So if you're doing that, it's basically saying that you value this world more than you value the hereafter. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then continues even past that. Find Allahi maghani kathirat. Allah actually can give a lot more. Allah is a provider of plenteous bounties. كَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ فَتَبَيْئِيَّنُ And then Allah SWT continues that that's actually how you guys used to be. What you used to make the basis of all interactions between you used to be what? B gains in this world. But you're not supposed to be like that anymore. When you look at someone, you're not just supposed to think, what can they do to me? Are they going to harm me or uh, 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 benefit me in this world? Now you're supposed to have a higher standard. That's supposed to be what? That you understand that true risk or true blessings come only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you should be expecting it from Allah. But if you take the iman away from someone, you're expecting what? You're expecting things from people and not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anymore. But again, be discerning. إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ um, Allah has always been aware of whatever you have been doing. And why I start here about the conversation about Assalamu Alaikum is when you actually say Assalamu Alaikum appropriately, when you're saying peace be upon you, yes, there's a dua aspect to this, which is what? You ask that Assalam, the provider of all peace, gives you peace, Salam. And there's something beautiful about that. But there's also an expression of what? You are free from all negative thoughts from me. Because I believe what? You're a mu'min. 
that seems to be suggested here. When I say assalamu alaikum, no harm is to come to you in a physical sense, but also from my own heart and also from my own mind. There's no negative assumption I have towards you. That's the equalizing presence of assalamu alaikum. And the reason I think this needs to be said is one, it's for us to think about that is that truly how we interact with people that the first thing when we greet is to establish what hey there's no bad blood between us there's there's i, I don't assume anything of you and i hope you don't assume anything of me and when you respond with wa alaykum assalam it's the same thing of you make a dua back for them may, may the may the one who all peace comes from assalam grant that on you as well um, but there's also this assumption of I don't have any animosity or anything against you either, that I want only good for you. Seems to be what's understood with as-salam, wa alaykum as -salam as well. And the reason that that's important is uh, sometimes we don't take that step back where you might interact with someone because you want to correct them. You might interact with someone because, I don't know, you're trying to clear up an issue that you have, have had with them in the past. It's not wrong, of course, to do so. We're supposed to be honest. We're supposed to be bringing out the best versions of each other. But the basis of it is assalamu alaikum. That, like, no, I, I really do, I, I don't mean any harm to you. I, I really don't. That needs to be internalized beforehand. And when you do that, it suddenly dictates what the rest of the conversation is going to be like. Or it should dictate what the rest of the conversation should be like. It shouldn't be like, assalamu alaikum, and then you completely destroy their character. You completely humiliate them. Well, you didn't actually, you didn't actually mean assalamu alaikum then. Um, and I, I, I feel it's necessary to mention this, especially online. That oftentimes when on comment sections and uh, when someone puts out a video or someone puts out a post and then people are like tearing them apart on all of the inadequacies that are found there. I know it's generally not assumed that you start with assalamu alaikum and that's all because it would be too redundant. It would be kind of interesting if every comment started with assalamu alaikum. But at the very least, that should be our mindset because that's what our messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us is when two Muslims interact with each other, they begin with assalamu alaikum. It's a clearing of the intentions. It's making a dua for the other person and then you begin to engage with them. I, I almost wonder if we had done that, would, how much more civil would conversations actually be, even in our online interactions? Like, right before I'm about to comment on someone, I'm like, assalamu alaikum. I think about it, that I have just made dua for them. You know, I really hope they are doing well. And I really hope that I have no, no, no negative things that are coming out in this interaction. That's supposed to be the legacy of assalamu alaikum. And then you continue. And not only that, but I'm not allowed to disagree or think that they're not a believer. Again, it's almost a submission, you're probably better than I am. Because I'm not allowed to say I'm a believer, but I'm supposed to think you're a believer. Why? Because I'm throwing the salam at you and you're throwing a salam at me. So it's really this assumption that the person you're talking to could very well, and you should assume, is in a better place with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than you are. So how much respect should that afford you? And then the other part of that, which is beautiful, is you're also doing this because you're expecting what? You're expecting reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from the person in front of you. That you giving that person dignity is because Allah told you. Remember, who you bring up in the interaction of assalamu alaikum, because you can make the argument, this person doesn't deserve uh, peace. But you didn't said salamu alaikum, you said assalamu alaikum. Which is what? It's coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what dictates the way you behave with them is because they value Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they value the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How could I be rude to someone who has love for Allah and love for the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Like that's the assumption you have and that's the closeness that you're supposed to have when you use this phrase of assalamu alaikum is I'm kind because my love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so great. My love for the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is so great that if someone else has that, how could I not just be soft towards them and, and really appreciate them for who they are? And that's the basis of starting with assalamu alaikum that it comes to. And now that uh, I, I, I always go over what I <laughs> my, my intended time, but the last few minutes we have, I wanted to share actually one of my favorite hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that many of you already know. And that's there's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in which he says, "Ya nas," or "Ayuhan nas," um, people, and it's not just for Muslims, but people. Um, Afshu salam, spread the salam. Yes, this is, could be seen as peace, but spread it. Just say salam, salam. And then uh, the Prophet doesn't stop there. Wa'at imut ta'am. 
and feed people. And one of the ideas behind this is what comes after the salam is supposed to be you wanting to take care of someone. Once you've taken care of what? Their emotional needs, because that's part of what assalamu alaikum is, that I want good for you and I hope you want good for me. And like there's this beautiful emotional exchange that has taken place. And actually a salam is feeding someone. And what I mean by that is feeding them emotionally. And especially in times of uh, when we don't get to see each other that often and we can't feed each other with our smiles and our presence, it's important to feed each other with our salam. So it's this idea of like, feed them emotionally. And feed people, right? Feed them actually physically as well. Because a salam should lead to what? You want to share meals with them. You want good for their physical being as well. Uh, and pray when the people are sleeping. What a salam should also lead to is when you've interacted with someone in real life, not only do you want to take care of their physical needs, but actually you, they've, your interaction with them makes you want to pray for them as well. Stand in the night and pray when people are sleeping. That that's the legacy of what assalamu alaikum should be. That you've made du'a for them in your, in, in when you see them. Now make du'a for them or pray for them and pray yourself. Your interaction with them should take you to be a conscious of them and of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even when you're not in front of them. When people are sleeping, وَصَلُّ النَّاسُ النِّيَامِ Pray. And then Allah, uh, and then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ends in such a beautiful, beautiful way. It says, تَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةَ بِالسَّلَامِ and enter into Jannah with Salam. That, that, that in essence what Salam should lead to if we're following a logical step. It starts with us saying Salam, gets to the point where you really appreciate them, so you're willing to feed them, taking care of their physical characteristics, gets to the point where your individual relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala improves because why? Because both of you exchanged a sincere salam with each other, and what does it ultimately lead to? Tadhuduna al Jannati bis salam. And enter everyone to, into Jannah with salam. That's really part of what Assalamu alaikum really has incorporated with it. Um, and if we combine this hadith with like uh, um, with the, the ayah from Surah An-Nisa, there seems to be this assumption of uh, when someone says Assalamu alaikum to you, think that they're a person of Jannah and you want to be a person of Jannah. So how would you interact with someone of Jannah? If that's how we can see anyone who has said salam to us or anyone that we say salam to, it, it would beautifully change the interactions that we had with them. Think maybe this is my key to Jannah right now. That's who I just interacted with. That's found within as-salamu alaykum. I know it just slips off of the tongue, but it's supposed to contain such a reality of our hearts um, that I, I, I think it's worthwhile to slow down. And sometimes it's worthwhile to slow down to the point of like right before you say salam, think about that dua that you're about to make and make it with intention rather than something that you just say. Make it so that your heart feels it um, and the smile you give someone or that, that embrace that you give someone really incorporates that as well. We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those that say as-salamu alaykum with our tongues and with our hearts, that assume belief in the people in front of us so that it will manifest as belief in our uh, uh, within our own hearts. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those that do just that, that their salam takes them to feed the emotional hunger of people, the physical hunger of people and the spiritual hunger of ourselves so that all of us will be inshallah as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described تدخل الجنة بالسلام that we because of our salam enter into Jannah with, with this peace and good assumption as well Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen Jazakallah khairan Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh